Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson we will be talking about resistance and conductance, so we're still working on various measurements within a circuit. So what is, resi is it resistance, sorry, and what is conductance? So resistance, it's the ability of a material to resist, to hinder the flow of electric current. And it's measured in ohms, and the symbol is omega. So resistance is basically the ratio of voltage over current. And if we look at the units, we'll have one ohm is equal to one volt over one amp. Now conductance, which is represented by the letter G, yeah, I know you think it should be C, but C was used for other things, so they have to vary the letters. Um, so it's represented by letter G. It's basically the counterpart of resistance. It's the opposite. If something resists, it does not conduct well, or if something conducts well, it will not resist well. So it's the flip side of the coin. So it's the ability of, mater of a material to conduct electricity or electrical or electric current, sorry. And it's measured in Siemens, which, is, uh, which has capital S as a unit. Uh, you may have come across this German company. It's a huge uh, industrial uh, manufacturer. Actually, it's the biggest one, I think, in Europe. Um, and they make, uh, they produce software, they produce uh, automated machinery for uh, all kinds of uh, types of industries, um, healthcare being one of them. So if ever you went or next time you go to pass a scan, uh, you might notice uh, the name Siemens on the side of the machine. So they're a big, big, big company. And obviously it was founded by Mr. Siemens and that's where all of this comes from. So again, big German company. So conductance, capital G, is equal to current I over voltage V. So you can see that this fraction or this ratio is the opposite of this ratio. And it makes sense because resistance and conductance are opposite to each other. If we look at the units, conductance is measured in Siemens is equal to current, one amp over one V voltage. Now, this we will not really use. We will calculate things based on resistance, but it's good to know the distinction between the two because they really go hand in hand. All right, so mathematically, what could this look like? What kind of problems or question could you get? So these are basic questions. So based on the image below, let's keep this, let's keep the equation at the top here. Um, based on the image below, what would be the value of the resistor in this circuit? So let me grab my pen. Okay, so we know that resistance, based on the equation at the top, resistance is equal to voltage. So it shows that uh, the power source gives a voltage of 6 volts over the current that flows through the circuit which is 0.3 amps, 0.3 amps. Okay, so I would calculate the value of this resistor. There's only one component in the circuit, so automatically the total voltage, the total current, will be related to the one component here. When we get into circuits, we'll see that it can be more complex than that, but for now we're keeping it simple. Okay, so 6 volts divided by 0.3 amps gives me 20 ohms. Okay, so it's as simple as simple as that. All right, now what can change the value of the resistance? What can help a system resist more or resist less depending on what you're trying to achieve? Well, the, factor, the factors that are lowering the resistance, so in other words, what is helping current to flow? Well, the nature of the substance, first of all, you want something that conducts well. Metals are the types of substances that conduct the best. The best metal of all is copper. So that's why we use copper uh, wiring in homes because it's the best metallic conductor. The length, the shorter, the better. Okay, so a very long uh, wire will lose some of its uh, electricity. It will dissipate um, in, in the, the surroundings. Um, diameter. So the wider is better. Sometimes you're going to see a measurement 
um, if you go to the hardware store and you're looking at wiring, there is what we call the gauge. That's the, the basically the measuring of the diameter. So the smaller the gauge, actually, the larger the diameter. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but that's what it is. So smaller gauge, wider diameter, that's better. And you can think of this as a highway. So you've got cars going through the same way electrons are going through a wire. So would you rather be stuck in a long, 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 narrow tunnel with all kinds of cars around you and it takes forever, you know, if there's traffic to get through that tunnel, or would you rather have a short tunnel that is very wide with many lanes, you're gonna get through much quicker. So better conductance if the wire is short and wider, smaller gauge, smaller gauge, sorry. The temperature, colder is better. If you think of it, if you think of any piece of electronic, when it overheats, it stops working properly or, it's, or it stops working at all. So that's why in a computer, for example, there's a fan to cool off the whole system because otherwise it's gonna start acting out or it's gonna shut down literally. So colder is always better for conductance or lower resistance. Okay, so those are the four factors that can affect resistance and conductance. Now these resistors can look like this and they can be very tiny. So this is an example of a little circuit board with a resistor. And sometimes they're so small, it's very hard to print on them uh, any kind of writing to say, okay, this has a value of 10 ohms, for example. It's much easier to put a color code on it because no matter how uh, small the lines are, we can still distinguish the colors. So that's what we use to determine or uh, to, to basically imprint on the, on the resistor what value it has. There is a color code, an international color code attached to these. Now, when we talk about resistance, why the heck would we use resistors? Well, two examples I can give you are a light bulb. So if we hinder the flow of electrons in a circuit, they have to work really hard to get through that portion of the circuit. And by doing that, they're spending some of their energy. So if you think of a light bulb, well, if the electrons have to spend their energy to go through that part of the circuit, well, they will basically create light in a sense. Well, not in a sense, but the light bulb will create light. So we use that concept of resistance to create light. Another uh, use would be to create heat. So in a toaster, you've got inside uh, wires that basically hinder the flow of electrons. And because the electrons are working really hard at going through that portion of the circuit, they will release some of their energy that we use to toast our bread. Okay, so those are two uh, uses of a resistor, but there's many more. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how this uh, color code works. Now you would not be required to know this by heart, you have to know how to work it, okay? So each color is assigned a value. So black is zero, brown is one, red is two, you get the idea. Then you have white, golden, and silver, which, well, there's other values as well, but very often it'll be these that will appear as a fourth color. Now, I say fourth color, there could be more than four bands, but we will work with four. So the last color is normally what we call the tolerance. So you've probably bought stuff at Ikea before. If you buy one table and you buy another identical table and you assemble both, um, you'll get the same final product, but they cannot be manufactured exactly, exactly, exactly the same way. You've tried to put those little pegs in and sometimes they fit just perfectly, sometimes a little too big, sometimes a little too loose, because our machines can't produce everything perfectly 100% of the time. So that resistor that you're looking at, any given resistor will have a certain value, but it's not perfect. So we, we put a, a certain level of tolerance. It'll be that value, but plus or minus a few percent, you know, within a certain range. So that's what the last color is for. It's basically the level of tolerance or the range um, from the actual accepted value of the resistor. Okay, so how does the color code work? So we have, in this case, three colors. So we have, let's say, brown, black, orange. So this is the first figure, this is the second figure, and this is the multiplier. What do I mean by this? So let's take a look at the colors. The first one is brown. So brown represents one, 
Let me write this down for you. So brown, do I have my marker here? My pen, okay, so let's do the pen. So brown is one, so one, followed by the second color, which is black. Black is zero, so one, zero. And we say multiplier. What we mean by that is times 10 to the something, times 10 to a certain exponent which is the third color. So the third color is orange, it's three. So times 10 to the three. And that would give me 10,000 ohms. Another way to look at it is to say first color, second color. So 10, one, zero. And then since the third color is three, we add three zeros. It comes out to the same. Okay, whether you do it this way, times 10 to the three, well, this is the same as saying times a thousand, so three zeros. Okay, so you can work it whichever way uh, works best for you. So the value is 10,000 plus or minus this tolerance. In this case, the tolerance is 5%. You may interpret this as yellow or gold, same value. So plus or minus 5% of this value, okay? So it's not exactly 10,000, it's 10,000 ohms plus or minus 5% of this value. Okay, so this is the ac acceptable tolerance. If we take a look at the second example, we have green. Green, the value is 5, followed by blue, which is 6, times 10 to the third color, which is orange, which has a value of 3. Or we could say 56 with three zeros, okay? So this here is the same as saying three zeros. This essentially is a thousand. So a thousand times 56 gives me 56,000. Plus or minus, we have gold again. So gold is plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 5% if you wanna write it this way. Let's not forget the ohms symbol. So the omega, okay? So 56,000 ohms plus or minus 5%. So this is how you have to read this. And again, you don't need to know this chart by heart. You just have to know how to use it. All right. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, we will uh, do calculations for resistance within a circuit in a subsequent lesson. But for now, I just wanted you to learn what is a resistor or what does resistance mean and how to use the color code. So if you have questions, please reach out. Otherwise, I will see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.